Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 543. The name of our devotional today is Walking in Love. But first, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord God, as you tell us to walk in love, my Father, as you tell us to be kind and merciful and compassionate to others, my Father, my Lord God. I recognize that it is a delight to you when I walk in perfect love. That is the ultimate goal for all humanity, my Father, is to walk in perfect love, a love that flows instinctively, childlike, from our spirit to you, my God. We recognize that this kind of love drives away fear and it enhances our oneness with you. Help us to begin walking more consistently in this joyful way Help us to resist the pull of our own selfish nature to control oneness, my Father, my God, to reason or to evaluate, my Lord. Help us instead to trust. May our oneness be so complete and our love for you so instinctive that your nature in us takes precedence every time my father renew our mind O god loving god by your precious holy spirit teach us how to walk in love and not fear and make it a delight that we may thrill you god with a love that grows more instinctively every day thank you father amen walking in love It does not produce fear, but it does require practice, however. It is true that we have the very nature of God inside us. Once we come to know him personally, the word promises us that we are brand new people. 2 Corinthians 5.17 And we are justified, made right with God by his grace in Jesus Christ. See Romans 3, 24. We are also sanctified, cleansed, and set apart. All of these changes happen through Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit within us. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. We are on our way to heaven, accepted by God. Hebrews 10, 14. If any of us were to die the minute after we receive him, we would not have the chance to grow and develop as Christians, although heaven would still be our home. But those of us who live on after deciding for Christ begin a daily process. If we are willing of having our minds transformed and renewed continuously by the Holy Spirit, then we will know God. The old sin nature, the soulish self, has died, Colossians 3.3. But in practical experience, we find that it takes very little for that old self to rise up again and try to take control. This is why we need, as the Apostle Paul urges in Romans 12.1 and 2, to have our minds transformed by the Holy Spirit so that we will have the mind of Christ. Learning to walk instinctively, flowing in love, is part of the exciting process of spirit transformation, and it is part of God's will for us. How do we know this? 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, This is the will of God, your sanctification. Sanctification implies being set apart, made holy, but it also means maturing in our cleanness, in our holiness, growing up as we are set apart for him. Ephesians 4, 14 through 15 says, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head even Christ. My Lord, thank you so much that you call us to mature in Jesus. You call us to mature in love, my Father, in perfect love, 
that drives out fear. It casts it out, my Father. Perfect love, my God. Just loving my Father is not accepting the sins of others. Loving my Father is being able to separate the sin from the sinner, my Father. Loving is also having the world know what we stand for, what we believe in, what is our mission, what is our vision, what is our purpose, what is, what is our conviction, what is our belief. That is also loving so that people will know who we are and what we stand for, so that they may come to us, so that they may know what we believe in. That is also loving loving ourselves, loving Christ, but most of all, loving others in an instinctive way, loving without fear. Thank you so much, my Father, for this message. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine. Remember to smile because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.